Hey, Adam. What's up? Do you ever retrospect? I try not to in okay. front of other people. What about spect? I'm Adam Mattis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the Yule Year Podcast. Daily Jazz Advice coming at you. Coming at you. Today's episode is sponsored by the Oxford American. We love the Oxford American. Uh, the Oxford American is a magazine dedicated to documenting the complexity and vitality of the American South. Its award-winning annual music issue comes with a CD sampler and digital download. It's a must-have for any serious music fan. Recent issues have featured Nina Simone, Thelonious Monk, John Cage, and John Coltrane. Visit OxfordAmerican.org slash YHI today. That's OxfordAmerican.org. O-R-G. O-R-G. As an organization. Oh. Org. Forward slash Y-H-I. Yes. Love the Oxford American. We do. And I mentioned you said visit today. They really should visit today because we don't, we, this might be coming to an end, this special. We're not saying it is, but we're not saying it. We, we can't guarantee it past this week, actually. Oh, I mean, if you haven't checked it out, if you like literature at all, if you like music, if you like roots, American roots music and, yeah. and jazz and blues. And, all and magazines, ju- journalistic oh, magazines. It's so good. It's, yeah. it's top shelf for good sure. Stuff. Um, in fact, keep it on your top shelf, next to your top shelf bourbon. It's all good. Okay, so today we're going to have, <laughs> we're gonna have a, a kind of a little bit of a, what I predict to be a jumbled mess of a Friday episode. Are you up for that? I'm always up for a jumbled <laughs> mess. You know that about me. So we start out the week with a little bit of tomfoolery, as they would say. Back oh, we in the had 50s. some fun. Yeah. We had some fun with our listeners, yeah. And so we're not going to, we're not like shutting her down. We're going to do a full retrospective, but... We wanted to dive into some of the comments and we realized that, you know, perhaps just from some of our wonderful listener comments and even links, we found some exciting things in, in catching up that we think can make up a, a whole episode. So we're going to look back. Or at, at least a jumble mess. Of, of or whatever. maybe yeah, it might like, be a jumble mess, but I think we might pull this together. We'll see. Uh, but you'll hear it. One, one of our most watched on the YouTube. You know, we're on the YouTube. I've heard. Yes. I try not to go there. We're on the YouTube. But did you know, fun fact about you'll hear, we have not always been on the YouTube's. It's actually, I think we started in August or September, so maybe halfway through, not even, right? Earlier. Earlier. June 30th, my friend. That was our first one. 2018. Yeah. So, yeah, so about- A little more than half. Six, five, six months after we started. Right, right. Kind of halfway through last year. But we really didn't commit to it. Like, we didn't go in with the pod cave till- no, September, I mean, I'm October. looking at us on that first episode right now. I mean, we're all exposed. No that pie cave on. Totally slapdash. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the first episode, you know what the first episode was on the YouTubes? No. That we had video. Seven reasons people hate jazz. <laughs> oh, I do know that because I get messages when we get new comments on YouTube. Yeah. And that's number one on the YouTube playlist. It's yeah. a terrible episode. And it's <laughs> people, it's people take it seriously. Like they see it for the first time. They don't know anything about the You'll Hear podcast. And they... It's become this comment <laughs> reservoir for people who actually do hate jazz. So it's because we were joking. We actually the episode defends jazz, right? And maybe do are people like going on YouTube or Google and searching "I hate jazz"? I think so. And then it, would they come to this? That <laughs> might be a search term that comes up. Our podcast of why people hate jazz by two jazz musicians who love jazz exactly. defending it. And but the the comments are ridiculous too. I don't know. I I, I haven't seen them all, but maybe you can. Well, let's delve into a couple of them. Here. I would okay, love that. The first yeah, one yeah. I see is I hate jazz because I'm too lazy and or not smart enough to appreciate how great it is question mark at least you're honest <laughs> lol <laughs> I'm just oh, having some fun they're being facetious there's a lot of that I, yeah. that's what I got a lot um, and then from Lebowski 53 my fundamental problem with jazz is that the musicians are having more fun than the audience now that one I think I might have answered this back oh uh, yeah I said good point I think that when jazz is executed well the audience is having just as much fun along with the musicians uh, and then somebody said, a lot of the time they are playing for themselves and not the audience. Ooh, we, it just got real up in here. Well, but you know what? <laughs> That's every, first of all, I, I have a lot to say about this. I, okay. don't, know, I don't know about you. So th- this actually could spark a pretty long conversation because. And joy? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, like. Uh, that's with any music. There's yeah. there's things on the spectrum of art for art's sake, and there's things on the spectrum of you know popular music of any genre of music. So yeah. jazz, yes. Some people are going to go to Harry Connick and have a great time. Some people are going to you know listen to Paul Blay and appreciate that for what it is. Well, you know, let's as, not get carried away, buddy. No, you <laughs> no, know what no, I mean. No, like no. it's it's like it's it's like abstract poetry or something. Right. Like it's 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 about the building blocks of this thing. So. 
who are you to, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm glad someone's doing both of those things. Yeah. Even if most of us fall somewhere in the middle of that spectrum. So right. I, I, I feel like that's a BS argument. You can go to a rock show that goes above your head too. Variety is the spice of life. Is yeah. that what you're trying to say? Totally. Yeah. 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 Uh, so there were some other ones. This is back at a time, I think when I was jumping on the comments and you weren't as in the entire history of the show. I was going to say, when did I ever jump in? But this was, a, uh, I, I don't want to go negative, because we're going to go positive in a second, but this was, uh, I, I don't know. Jazz musicians love, this is from Politically Incorrect. <laughs> That's their username. Okay. Jazz musicians love to portray themselves and their music as more sophisticated or lofty. Sorry, but 90% of the time, it's not true. They love to believe they make good music when they improvise. They don't. Most of the time, it sucks. But 10% of the time, okay, now, this is <laughs> 10% of the time, we're killing it. Is that, so you're saying there's a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> and so my my reply was just a uh, quote jazz is stupid from angela the office that was my reply yeah and she did say that yeah you know uh um, sounds like someone doesn't understand <laughs> jazz ah! yeah. no. and then okay. this was i just want to end on this negative note perfect rhythm uk said this makes me detest jazz all the more now that i love <laughs> that's a great comment the yeah. fact that our podcast made him hate jazz even more coming in off of a search of i hate jazz <laughs> That makes me proud of ourselves. Oh, God. I'm proud of what we built here, friend. So you can go on and on, but if you want to check that out, we'll put a link below to Seven Reasons People Hate uh, hey, Jazz on the YouTube Season 1. I'll tell you what. God bless the YouTube comments because, you know, we get nothing but love on, like, uh, the podcast apps and Apple yeah. and Spotify and emails that come in and voicemails. They're so right. nice, and people don't hold back on YouTube. It's an interesting thing. Like the podcast listeners, it's a different, I don't want to say it's a different class of listeners because that would be what they say is classists. Yeah. Cla classically classist, I, would, I might even say. Uh, but it's, it's a different, uh, I can't say breed because that would not be appropriate. A different type of person, a yeah. different type of listener. Yeah. They're, we they're, love they're them thoughtful. All. We love them all. We yeah. just love the audio listeners more. That's not true <laughs> at all. No, no, no. I, you know what it is? I think there are more kind of casual searchers that just come, which is great. Well, and it's it's anonymity as well. Right. You know, the, the people on YouTube don't put their name or have their email address in there. So they, can, right. they right, just right. are saying. Well, I don't some, think they do on the podcast either. Well, no, on, they on so, iTunes. Yeah, sometimes. No, it's always like. You oh, know, I guess that is anonymous. You know, green green gorilla from Wisconsin or whatever. Yeah. USA. There's something about YouTube where it's it's brutal out there, but it's good. I like it. I like the negative. But I think podcasts like you are a little like you're not generally going to be just listening to make fun of us because we're not that charming. And if you're not interested in what we're saying, which is fine, you just don't stick around. Whereas YouTube, yeah. you could kind of. I mean, there's some funny stuff to look at in some of these videos, just the way we were kind of presenting it. So sure. Um, well, we're also pretty funny looking. <laughs> exactly. Um, also, fun fact, if you want to do a little chronology um, of Adam Manis' keto journey, um, oh, you can look back at the, when did, when did When did you enter ketosis? What, what <laughs> month was that? <laughs> it sounds like I have an illness. <laughs> well, I... Uh, no, I started, yeah, with the with the, the keto thing in October. Okay, so you can look at the videos and see that journey, which has really been an amazing thing as he uh, goes from gigantic to gaunt over. <laughs> I told you this could be a jumbled mess, my friend. It is. It is. Okay, so here's an episode uh, just from a few days ago, and I wanted to, uh, I, I really, some of these comments really, I just saw them and they, they kind of resonate with me, but this was our seven tracks. They give us chills, yeah. and this was some of our just, that was a great Apex. episode. That was a way. great episode. Pat ourselves on the back. For I that mean, one. great for us because they're ones that give us drills, and hopefully, you know, we can share some of that. But I think everybody identifies, even it's mm. different for everyone, and it should be. Mm. Um, but uh, beautiful music for life said Brand from Marcellus has lots of these moments in his playing. One example is his solo in Mo Better Blues. It starts about one thirteen after the melody, and with a link to it on YouTube. And this was so cool because when I looked at it, it's thank you, beautiful uh, music for life. Um, it made me realize and kind of validate it. I was like, Branford's one of those players. I mean, there's a lot, but he's one of those players that hits that kind of uh, uh, goosebump inducing, giving us chills moments quite a bit. And I'm thinking back, I've had the pleasure of playing with him live, mm -hmm. and, and he kind of does it more than most other players that I've been around. He's just one of those, he has that ability to, to push it to 11 in terms of just spirit in the music. So big shout out to Branford. Um, and it's cool that somebody else kind of heard it Two in, in another place, and I never thought about it in that Mo Better Blues because that's never been like my favorite kind of soundtrack. And I mean, it's cool. I know a lot of people love that tune, but when I went and checked that spot, um, they whoever wrote this, they are absolutely on point. So that was fun to kind of get that back. Another Branford moment. I think I, the one I put in ours was about Stella by Starlight with Ellis Marsalis. That was yeah. I really like. I know that was just a recent episode, but you know we do so many of these, and some just stand out as we're doing them. We do it every day, every so, day, as we know, say in St. Louis. This, this jumbled day. mess can turn into a bit of our, we are. you know, our selected favorites. Yes, you know, yeah. is what I'm thinking. 
And then some other comments real quick on that same, uh, we'll link to this below, two seven tracks to give us chills. Um, somebody said, uh, Bright Contish 13, cringeworthy intro in its purest form. Great episode, guys. I'm excited that we can be cringy and they can still get some joy out of it. So, because we're, we're, we're never sure about that. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've said it before and I'll say it again. The, the cringiness is part of our sound. Right. <laughs> now, this next one is serious. And this is from Alex Bannister. Um, same episode, brand new subscriber trying to catch up, find you both very inspirational and got me playing the trumpet again. Many thanks. Smiley face. Thank you, Alex. That really made my day. That made our days. It made, you know, I mean, that's to, you know, we joke a lot and, and we're having fun in here, but really this is all about connecting people with music Absolutely. and we love giving the advanced information or whatever, but it warms my heart just to hear somebody saying, I want to play my instrument again. I want to connect with music, this powerful force. Such a huge part of playing this music uh, with, with good musicians is this hang that develops usually on the gig or at the rehearsal or after and I think one of the coolest parts for me about the podcast and doing it with you and something we hear a lot from our listeners is that the sense of community that you know we've just kind of stumbled upon yeah that we would do anyway you know you and I hang out quite a bit for some reason still outside of the podcast but but it's part of the music it like, is like it's always been in the tr a traditional part of the music yeah I'll tell you what man one of my favorite um episodes i think it was re a real turning point episode for us and and a very popular one was our solo analysis of roy hargrove uh, strasberg saint denis mm. um that we did you know the week uh after uh roy hargrove's tragic early early death and right. so many great uh, affirming comments on on this uh video and and so many great shout outs to, to roy and suggestions to what to li listen for and everybody's favorite roy track and Man, it was um, that was that was a good one. Yeah, and I love and some people filled in some little. And they do this on a lot of different episodes, which is great for us filling some of the little blanks when we're because look, we're totally unscripted, unprepared. Yeah, and we're saying we think it's this or whatever. And I love it when people either correct us or fill in the gaps because you, you, you bringing up Danton Bolter, <laughs> perhaps. But it's like, Butler, <laughs> I mean. Um, you, you said it really well, very eloquently. Is this is a community, and we we just kind of tapped into it, and we want to thank all of the listeners and the watchers because we. I want to make it very clear that we did not create this community at all. We just kind of stumbled into it, but but we feel like you guys are our people, and we're all. You know, everybody hopefully has a uh, you know a community in their area. Maybe you don't, but if you have a few people, we have a few people here in St. Louis where you just, you speak the same language, the things that you, it's not that you like exactly the same things and there isn't things that you argue about or whatever, but, but this is such a wonderful gift that jazz has given all of us. Mm. And so that's why we're doing that. That's why I say I get excited when somebody, you know, when we can honor somebody like Roy Hargrove and bring in, in, in the, the community around, you know, such a central figure to, to us, but to the just to the world of music and, and somebody picking up their trumpet again. That's that's what it's about. You know? Totally. Another one of my favorites is from December 12th. Do you remember what was going on around this time? Dude, I, I literally don't remember yesterday's episode. How am I supposed to remember? <laughs> you, so we were, you are, Peter's always on the road. I'm, I'm usually around St. Louis, yeah. but sometimes we, our schedules don't meet up. And right. It's amazing that we got all the way to December from January, 2018 to December. Oh, was this our first? This was the first, uh, oh. I did a solo. You'll hear it at the piano. And oh, right. I'm just going to kind of a hit. It was kind of a hit. I'm just, I mean, we're very competitive around here and I would just <laughs> like to read great stuff. The core, the name of the episode is, uh, four basic chord voicings. Every jazz musician should know. Great oh, stuff. Oh, well, you're giving them exactly what they want. You're uh, bottom feeding. I'm of not course. dumb, man. I'm not. If you're not going to be here, I'm going to give away the farm. <laughs> Great stuff. The chord structure of the first example uh, was new to me. The best explanation I've new ever heard. That sounds like an R&B artist. Don't worry about new it. To me. <laughs> Crystal clear and to the point. Thank you. Thanks. And thanks for doing this alone. Someone is MIA. That's from Mike. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Great advice. Thanks. Another dope lesson. Super clear and concise. I, I mean, I don't know. What You did some solo. I, when I was in Disney, you did some solo episodes. I just want to see if they were uh, right. as well, well received. I don't know. Maybe keep, keep reading those because in a second. you. Oh, may I have will. A, There's so many more that I, I will no, keep going. Good, because it's possible you're going to have a, a, a new one. Wait, what's the name of this? Four basic chord voicings every jazz. Yeah. You this might have is, a new comment in a second to read. Just hold on. This is rich <laughs> and creamy knowledge. Great job going solo, Adam, from our friend Darren. Uh, this is brilliantly friend, useful Darren. and Your thanks. Friend, Darren. Awesome. <laughs> All right, just keep keep reading because there may be a new comment just in a second. I'm just trying to well, find. Well, it. <laughs> you know, I would also like to. I did a whole week, by the way. I'm really going to toot my horn because you, 
toot your horn a little bit. Come and on. I man. am a humble apprentice. <laughs> and so I'm here to, uh, you know. December 12th. Look at the latest comment. Oh, December God. 12th. Are you messing? Would you like me to read it? There's a lot of great stuff. You're right. That's what I'm saying, man. Wow. It's very good. Awesome. Great. Yeah. But the last one, it was I. It was, hold on. I'm, it's refreshing. <laughs> it was I. I wonder who that was from. I don't know. It sounds like something. From Anonymous. Uh, no, but that actually was a really good episode. And it started, that was our first. Well, no, I think we were at the piano earlier. We did another session at the piano. Uh, Before that? Or yeah. was that after? But I knew that with you gone, I was like, well, I'm not going to just sit in the pod cave alone. Well, no, but that really tapped into, wow, a lot of views on that. It, it really tapped into a couple of things like, you know, discussion and kind of a, a, a jumping off point for something that I think actually goes beyond pianists. Because a lot of times we get, not, not accused of, but we get a little too piano centric. And I think that, the, and I'm just remembering this episode and stuff, is I think there's a lot of interest from people that aren't pianists because... You, like, you you said it right. Four basic chord voicings every jazz musician should know. Yeah, I didn't pianist. want it for just pianists. I thought yeah. these are things, and and they really are. You know, block chords and and five note voicings. Something that I think is helpful for any jazz musician, whether you're a drummer or a pianist or whatever. You know. Right. Um, you know what we should do since this is kind of turned into like a retrospective, a little bit of our best of our favorites. Yeah. Maybe uh, on the YouTube comments, leave your favorite, leave a link to your favorite. You'll hear it episode. On today's we, like, for instance, are we on the YouTubes today? We we're are on the YouTube cameras. Today. But no, it might be cool to see what everybody's, you know, what everybody's drawn to. I mean, we get a little bit of, from view count, but I wonder if there's a, a preferred. Well, that's just a straight popularity contest. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that can be algorithmic, you know, magic yeah. too. So what's, uh, what's your favorite episode? What have you found to be the most useful? I think. Yeah. Be a, it might bring up some refreshing some things that we forgot and about. if we know that we can maybe do some more episodes like that right so there's one more do we have time for me to do one more no that i are you serious no, i'm kidding okay <laughs> no I mean, it's, it's all good um but now i'm oh i'm not able to find it now herbie Han okay we did an episode it was kind of we might not have been officially calling them solo analysis yet uh but of herbie hancock's all of you solo great solo we, right all from my funny valentine great, live yeah great solo. and um I can't actually find the boom, 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 boom. Was it pre-YouTube? No, no, no. It was on YouTube because one of our lists, our watchers, listeners, actually was inspired by that to transcribe the solo. And ah. we just found this today. I don't even know if you've seen it. Well, I showed uh, you just the beginning. We haven't even gotten all the way through. But now I'm having a little bit of... Uh, I haven't checked it out, but uh, what you showed me looked great. Why don't you, while I'm finding this, kind of give a little background as much as you can remember that episode. So this was from My Funny Valentine. I think this was one of our very first solo analysis. I think it might have been the first solo yeah. analysis, which is fitting because Herbie's, you know, obviously our, our guy kind of. Yeah. And uh, one of our guys. Uh, and yeah, I don't remember if we called it a solo analysis or not, but we basically just broke down uh, what we do when we do a solo analysis, which is not an in-depth theoretical analysis as we found out from the Corey Henry solo analysis, but more of a discussion <laughs> about like the architecture of the solo, the phrasing, some harmonic and melodic stuff, you know, right. that we can, that we can hear on the fly and, and kind of big strokes, but nothing too granular breaking it down. Right. We really just like to talk about like the vibe and, and getting those sounds, you know, in a solo framing, yeah. framing the time with magic. Yeah, and maybe we'll get back to some of those too. And folks, if they had ones in particular, especially if they're ones that we kind of are up on or whatever, could could jump into some of those. Okay, so the episode is, in fact, Herbie Hancock, All of You Solo, number 176. Mm. I think that's season two. Is mm -hmm, that, that sound mm -hmm, about right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, sure. I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, and uh, this was from, yeah, last August. Do you remember what happened last August? No idea. I mean, last, it was hot in St. Louis, probably. August 10th. I was a year younger then. Um, but the cool thing about this was, yeah, we did the solo breakdown. Um, but just three days, three days ago, Kim Jong-soo Jong said, I made a transcription of the solo after watching this video. Video. Thank you for the inspiration, Adam and Peter. And uh, Kim Jong-soo put a link to it. And it's another YouTube video. And we'll link to this. Actually, you know what? We're going to add the link to this to the original episode as well. Cool. Because we've just started kind of jumping in it. But it looks like a really good transcription of this amazing oh, soul. Perfect, man. And so I'm excited to, to dig into it. He's just got the right hand, which I love because especially on this soul. I mean, the left hand's always cool, but it really kind of goes in and isolates these wonderful melodic things. And so 
that's the kind of stuff that's just warms my heart. So glad to inspire a little yeah, bit. Check but really, out. we're just pass, we're just passing the baton along from Herbie solo. You know, totally. Yeah, that's great, man. Well, this was fun. I feel like we pulled a uh, pulled a mess together. Yeah, that's right. Made something out of it. That's right. Yeah. Thanks to the Oxford American again. Remember, if you go to oxfordamerican.org uh, slash yhi, you can save tw- or you can get a f- your subscription for twenty five bucks. Yeah, uh, I think it's an investment, and I'm I'm willing. Like anybody who goes through the year gets your four episodes. If you don't feel inspired, smarter, more knowledgeable, cooler. You know what's been killing me on the Oxford American? What the poetry? I know that sounds weird, oh, that's but right. man, it's great. And they always have something there. Right? They it's always like a have section, right? five or six poems in there, and they're always really like really really well done i mean the southern poetry tradition is so rich it's amazing i mean so that could be some some nice inspiration for some songwriting for some of you folks out there absolutely well until next week have a good weekend and you'll hear it